Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Three Nerds in the Basement, episode 119. I'm your host, Vince, and today I am joined by... Blavin. Blavin. Sweet. This week on the episode, we got a big video game review of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Then we got some picks from GDC, uh, some toys, and of course, Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so oh, let's, yes. uh, let's not stall. Let's just get into the Monster Hunter review, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those who don't know, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is probably the fourth or third time this game has been released, or the, this incarnation of Monster Hunter only. Kind of crazy. Only they put on the Ultimate tag to insinuate that it's got everything that all the previous versions had and more. But it does. Yeah. Uh, uh, full disclosure, we only have the 3DS versions. Mm -hmm. None of us picked up the Wii U one. Because we're too cheap. Yeah, and the premise is basically as what the title sounds. You go into places to hunt giant monsters. Then you hunt them multiple times over again so that you can soon wear their skin. <laughs> and, and then hunt them in their skin. And then use their own hides to beat other monsters. Exactly, with. and that's what Monster Hunter sounds is. Sounds morbid, but it actually is Yeah, morbid. there's a very robust story. And... No, no that's not where I was going. It's going with story upgrade so and weapon system and, and skill sets Loot. and slots. Subspecies. Um, yeah, it's it's a very big world. It's super popular in Japan and everywhere. Exactly, it is. It Monster Hunter is what decides which handheld console will be king. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it. Anyways, we're all veteran Monster Hunter fans in this room. Yep, that is true. But this is the ultimate edition. That is tr true. <laughs> so is also true. Uh, That's also a fact. Tell me what you guys think about the ultimates, Blavin. Uh, I played Try on the Wii. Yeah. And I've been playing Monster Hunter since one, accidentally picking it up at Walmart. On PS2. Yeah. And uh, this game, I think, is really good. I, It's more of the same as in Try. So if you like Try, you'll be right at home here. They put enough new content in, I think, that. Oh, excuse me. We'll merit another go through because I mean my problem with Monster Hunter 2 on the PS2 and then Monster Hunter Freedom Unite yeah. was basically it was almost the same thing with like one or two new monsters but this thing added like oh, quite a few new ones so that's cool uh, we ourselves haven't gotten to the high 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 rank quest where that's where a lot of new monsters and there's some yeah I was gonna say because up to this point we haven't it's really... pretty much the same yeah yeah. but now that we're in the now that we've gotten some subspecies I think we're more excited yeah. for it yeah. but yeah I'm you know <laughs> Not being the one to want to pick it up first. Yeah. And then now that I play it, I'm an idiot. If you are a fan of Monster Hunter, this is a really, really good yeah, man. continuation of it. And it's worth, I think, getting a 3DS for. Okay. I really do think it's worth it. Um, the, the 3D option is pretty fancy. I don't always play with it on, but I do like that it's there as an option. Yep. Uh, they made a few upgrades to the... Interface, like uh, the bottom screen being used for combining and stuff on the yeah. fly, not having to stop and do it by the menus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the lock-on system, which I'm finding actually very at home with, where I can lock onto a monster. Yeah. And usually centers it on their chest, but whatever, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't really matter. I'm not good, so. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this iteration. And the biggest thing for me is that they brought back all the weapons. Mm. They brought back the hunting horn, which was my favorite weapon ever. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, yeah, a good installment. I really enjoy it. I recommend it. Okay. Uh, how much have you played? I've played around 50 hours. Oh. And, this and is... we've had this for like, what, like two days? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Something like that. No, it's been a week since its release. Yeah. Um, Can you to... imagine that, folks? How much we've played, right? Yeah. So if you guys also remember on last week's episode, Anthony said he was going to go and buy Monster Hunter. If not, he was going to be punished. And Anthony... Unfortunately, picked up Monster Hunter. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so, Anthony, tell, tell me about Monster Hunter. I think you're also in the same boat, about 40, 50 hours as Blavin. Yeah, right? I've got like 41 hours or so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't play one, but I, I did start, I started on the PSP, mm -hmm. and that was really fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, I only played by myself mm -hmm. before. But as soon as I borrowed Tribe from Blavin, it was like, oh, playing with people is the best. Oh, because you had the online. Yeah, because I had the online, right? And so now that I, that I have people to play with on the portable system, mm -hmm. that it, it, was, it was cool beans picking it up on the portable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Blavin said, uh, the subspecies add a lot more than I thought they would. Okay. I thought they'd just be like recoloring and they'd hit harder and that's pretty much it. 
But a lot of them, all their attacks have new properties. Uh, like, for example, the Pink Rathian, a lot of, they have the same moves that do the same thing, like the backflip, but their animations are changed. Like, he does, like, a 360 backflip and, like, spins in the air and does all this crazy stuff. Uh, and it, it's, there's a lot more game there than I thought there would be. Like, I would have been happy with just recolors and stuff, probably, because oh, really? it's, it's just a loot game. Like, I still play, I still play Try, even though I had, like, all the maxed out high rank <clears> stuff, like, <throat> just the to hunt stuff like it was mm -hmm. just fun but uh but yeah it, it added a lot more and all that stuff looks really cool too all mm -hmm. that uh all that subspecies stuff mm -hmm. um again for the ds controls uh the lack of not having a second joystick is made up with the lock-on which i think is re is a really smart implementation because it's mm -hmm. not it's not constant lock-on you're not mm -hmm. like locked on until you let go you just tap it and it just centers the camera mm -hmm. and then you have the ability to change it as you go yeah like it's just a quick thing and then also being able to uh if there's multiple monsters in the area keep track of what monster you're attacking with and choosing which one to lock on to mm -hmm. so that's that's really good i don't use the combining much because i kind of just hit stuff and mm -hmm. i don't really set traps or anything mm -hmm. but uh but yeah no it's it's really fun and again playing playing with people really makes this game just exponentially more fun i can see why it's like one of the most popular games in japan because mm -hmm. everybody has a portable system over there and like if i could just play with people in public like if i was just in a food court and i just randomly found some guy to play monster hunter with that would be awesome like it's this is a dream mm -hmm. uh other than that you know like i bought the ds for this game and it was worth it mm -hmm. like just solely for this game and it was worth it and also uh i don't know if it's just me but the cats having two cats really uh makes the game a lot easier because it distracts like it distracts the monsters a lot like in comparison to two where you had no companions mm -hmm. and the monsters on you 100 percent of the time like i have a chance to take breathers in between attacks because the the big monsters will target yeah. the two separate cats these right? are shakalakas not cats right oh yeah whatever shakalakas i find them completely useless now i just i like them because it takes because they just take the the aggro off me and so he'll, he'll be attacking that way, and that means I can focus the tail, I can focus whatever I need. Mm. And Monster Hunter is, like, a really, I guess, daunting game to get into. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there when you start it. Mm -hmm. It's like you got to collect certain parts, you got to learn how to combine, you got to learn how to do all this stuff. Uh, but, yeah, having those cats really makes it beginner-friendly. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to near the end game or the high rank stuff, you got a grasp on it and you understand the whole deal. I think it, it, yeah. they do a really good job of leaning players into <clears throat> the the depths of Monster Hunter, like the, mm -hmm. the really intense, more hardcore stuff of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like overall, this game's like really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of game here. I think I'm I'm at seventy hours, and I'm probably just one third into it. I would yeah, say. yeah, yeah. Like there's a lot of game here. Um, it is pretty much just try with. I don't want to just call it extra features because it does seem to be like a, a little bit more. Um, it is a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. I like this game, but I don't think it's an amazing game. I think it's just, it's pretty, It's you know, it's just good. There's a lot of changes they made, but there's a lot of things that they just still haven't changed to it that have really pissed me off since I played Monster Hunter 2. Um, basically... The when they added the targeting system, it's great, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I find that like they could have gone one step further. They could have just you know targeted multiple parts. They should have given you the option to toggle the to make it like um in the three D Zeldas, yeah. like Z targeting. Yeah, uh -huh. they should have had that as an option, mm -hmm. so you can hold. The other thing too, too many invisible walls. Yeah, there's so many times where I think I can dodge an attack because there's space there, but it's an invisible wall, and mm -hmm. this has been like. A design problem since the PS2 days, and it's like there's these small things that like fundamentally Monster Hunter just has not tried to get around. They've just kind of stuck with it, and uh, that stuff pisses me off. There's also a slight sense of um, lag in button input, like Killzone 2. Hmm. Like when I press to to guard or something, or not to guard to to attack, I feel like there's like. It's only like a fraction of a second, but it's not as instant as I'd want it to be. That's that animation priority, right? No, it's not animation. It's the minute I hit to watching the animation start. Oh. There's like there's a super like slight sense. I never I, noticed that. Is this, I don't know. Is this your first Monster Hunter? No, my first is two. 
Oh, okay. Actually, my first one I borrowed from you. Okay. Back in high school. Okay. And then I played uh, the PSP ones, and then I bought. And Try. you never had those problems with those. No, I always had these problems. Oh, okay, it never changed. Yeah, that's what but, I'm saying. But then again, it's like more of the same, right? Exactly. You don't it's... you don't change a formula that's selling. But I don't. Yeah, that's true. But I feel like uh, they're just doing the minimal amount to get. I know by. what you mean. I know what you mean. You know, I feel like that's why when the the. The MH4 trailer show, and they're like, "Oh, it looks like they're actually taking steps forward." Yeah. Jumping like, attacks. Yeah, like maybe things. maybe they could bring some of that stuff into here, but I guess they're only doing enough to make a sale. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And uh, yeah. well, I mean that's just just because it's like if they really did love their fan base, then they would change it. But they don't. Uh, I don't no, know. It's not like I mean, if honestly, like the, no, like, I, the, I, the, I, I, see, I see both sides of the argument. Like, the, what fixed. Well, don't fix what's, what's not broken, broken right? right. Yeah. And this is their model, and it's working for them. I'm yeah. just saying these don't work for me. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is that if you haven't played Monster Hunter, and you've seen videos and it looks kind of appealing, if you're going to go in solo, don't bother. Yeah, uh, you kind of need friends to get into it. You know what, even, and this is why I didn't really care for the online feature in the Wii U version. It was just that it didn't matter if I could play online people. I just didn't care with playing with complete strangers. And if you're new to Monster Hunter, you're going to want someone who can show you the ropes. Yeah, because jumping into it by yourself is kind of a daunting It is thing. the roughest experience. Because they don't really train you as much as you No, can. and they, they... I can't believe it, but they don't show you how they to... You don't agree with like, that? I think no. I think that the, this game kind of does ease you into all that stuff now. Really? Like, I know. But getting... no. you because you already played Try already. You already I have knew. To try. Yeah, you already knew all the stuff. That's why you knew what they were talking mm -hmm. about. But this game does not teach you how to capture a monster. Like they don't tell you about the whole what wait for it's when it's limping. They don't tell you about tra that you need to use the trap and the trank bombs. I'm pretty sure it's in the text. No, it's not. It's like when they explain it in the guild hall. No, they, they don't. That's a, like there's all these little intricacies that that we know because we've played it so long that it's just second nature to us that this game does not want to tell you. And I do like how the combo table has the ingredients already laid out. It tells you what two ingredients you need to make the item. But that's assuming you've made it once before. No. It's really? Not. Yeah, it's just it's just there. Cuz there's items that I've never made and Oh really? It already says I'm like, "Oh, I wonder what this mystery item is oh. I can make it." Interesting. Yeah, they never used to have that. I think I don't um, remember having that. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think this game t like if if don't get me wrong. I'm having complete fun with it, but I'm just saying if I had to be completely objective and take myself out and be like, "Okay, I'm experiencing this game for the first time." There's a lot of things here that would just push me away that I could never, um, I could never recommend this to someone who's just like vaguely interested and has no idea. Uh, it's it's like the exact opposite with Dark Souls, where in Dark Souls you kind of the fun of that game is figuring it out. Yeah. This game is just frustration when you're trying to figure well, it out. Think about it this way: when you started the game. And try to. What was your first monster to try? Portable second. Okay, when you first started that game, how did they ease you into it? It didn't. In portable second. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, no, but maybe it's because I played second already. But I did feel that the the monsters were better set up, like the beginner monsters, to teach you that, like to teach you in the water, to teach you on land. For like your first capture mm -hmm. quest is, what is it? I think it's like a corpico. Mm-hmm. And I'm. Um, I swore I read in the the text, but when you start up, like when you get into it, it's like okay, you're capturing. There are there are there's a trap and trank bombs in the chest. Use those. Well, here's, well, here's, another, here's another thing. When you first started booted up, uh, the portable game, second. Uh, okay, yeah, portable second. Uh, they gave you all the weapons, right? They have one of each weapon. Yeah. Did they teach you how to use them? No, it's just go. No, there's that's two, the thing, there's two right attack there. buttons. There's a thing because right? the control seems the same for everything. And where do you find the controls? In the, in the instruction manual. Yeah, exactly, right? And, like... Like, the know. thing is, even after you even had this problem, you're like, how do you do this one attack? And you didn't know how to do it. The thing is, it's in the menus, but they don't tell you that. Mm. They don't tell you these things, right? Yeah, the, the fact that it happened to you last night and you've been playing for a long time. Yeah, you've like, been playing for a while. Yeah, because on, still on, the, on Try, it was, like, press Start. But in this one, it's like, there's you don't press yeah, Start. Yeah, and they don't tell you anything. Yeah, yeah, it's all these, like, these fundamental things to help people can guide you in they right. just they don't show you and it's i, I don't know why like, they the, the reason it. we're having such an easy time is because we already know what items we're looking for yeah. we already know what thing is but if a yeah. person just boots it up it's like oh i got a worm what can i do with this i remember when i first started playing i was like i'm gonna try and combine this worm with anything in my box yeah. i remember the first time you showed me you could fish the gobel with a frog i was like you could do that shit 
It's and then and then I realized there's like a whole world of things you could do. You could fish the what's his face out of the sand. Our favorite new one. Oh yeah, yeah, the nibble snarf. Nibble snarf. Nibble snarf. Yeah. Um. But but that aside, I, th- I think if if you're gonna get this game, try and convince a friend to go with you. Yeah, if even if you have like two people at like honestly, everybody who I've talked to play this game, even the PSP one, they have their girlfriends playing, they have their friends playing. Yeah. I think this is the way to go. Yeah. And online for Wii U, okay. Yeah. Anthony and I had fun with that. Yeah. That's also good. If you're fine with randoms then randoms. Yeah, that, that's a problem. Yeah, like that's just a preference thing. Like I, I don't for these kind of tactical games. You want coordination? Yeah, like I don't... Bro, all we do is just smash face. I just kind of sit back <laughs> and then watch other people go nuts. Yeah, but it's, sometimes it's hard, right? Like sometimes like... Even we run into the problem today. We tried to set down... Uh, our teacher tried to set down bombs and you guys just blew them up. That happens all the time <laughs> online. Boom. And then eventually by the end of try, uh, you were either not too good to hang with the big boys or you're too good for all the low rank dudes and you can never find someone who's at your pace. That's why you just make uh, greed quests and you're like higher hunter rank only... Only this quest, and then people who are good only show up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's a good game. <laughs> yeah, no, don't no, get it wrong. No, it's a good game. I'm just saying there's still issues to it that I find strange. Uh, yeah, I like, I like, the, like, I'm really addicted to the whole get armor, get weapons, look wh- cooler, look cooler. I don't really care about stats to be honest. I just, I'm a collector. <laughs> I want just a whole like closet full of. You're wardrobes. a monster hunter fashionista. Yeah, basically that's what I am. Yeah. But no, it's 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 a fun game. And what's the price point of this? Thirty nine 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 nine. Mm-hmm. I think you get a lot of value out of your thirty nine in this game. Oh no, you definitely. There's a lot of game here. Like like we said, like yeah. we're each good forty hours. It's yeah. forty to seventy hours in, and we're like. We, like, just got to yeah. the surface. Yeah, the and, and, like, what we're not telling you is, like, in the past week, all we've been doing is getting together and just yeah, Monster dude, Hunter. Was it Friday and Saturday? It was eight hours of Monster Hunter. Every no. time, and all we were doing was just basic No, it was the day we recorded last, po- on my birthday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just played Monster Hunter all night. Mm. And it was all prep work. Basically, we were just prepping to fight something. Yeah. And then, after and, that, that was the prep to fight something. Yeah, else. and that's that's basically what it is. It's, uh, yeah. I don't know. Guys, give it a rating. I give it a five. Five. I give it a four. Yeah, it's good enough. Yeah. Six. <laughs> give it a six. I'm going to get a firm five without the extra enthusiasm. Like, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a firm five. It's not like, oh, yeah, this is like 20. No, it's a five. It's just a five. Five wits. It's the best. That should, be, that should be her scale. It's a number and then enthusiasm rating. <laughs> Uh, this is like a this is like an enthusiastic three. Then I guess mine would be a depressive four. <laughs> okay, all right, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Mine's, mine's an enthusiastic. It's, it's, a, it's everything that I expected. It's good. And you're upset that it's everything. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I am sad that it's they only delivered what I expected. I see. I see. Dun, dun. So greedy. Not enough stuff for us. Exactly. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Okay. So there you go, Monster Hunter. Go pick it up if you haven't already. <laughs> uh, Just go do it. If you don't, I mean, if you don't have a three DS right now, I mean, here's your go, reason. Go buy a three DS. I bought one. You I think cool I think idea? we all did. Yeah. yeah we all, I mean, we all technically be. I bought it for a different reason, but I ended up playing Monster Hunter anyway. More. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I haven't played Fire Emblem yet. Dang. Uh, time for our picks of the week, and I'm gonna start this one off. So I have two. My first one's a short one. Uh, toys. S H Figure Arts. Toys. Daft Punk. Oh, yeah, the new so album. That. So, yeah, I thought this was just totally out of left field. Not see this come in. Daft Punk figures from SH Figure Arts. They're the guys who make uh, uh, the Bugmen figures and Sentais. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I just think they look really, really cool. I really love their helmets and their design. They're scheduled to release November. Um, because Daft Punk, Daft Punk is international, chances are you'll be able to get them at your local retail, which is pretty neat. Uh, but I don't really have anything else to say other than they look pretty damn cool. cool. Are you guys excited for their new album? Nope. Yeah, I, don't even know I love that punk. All right. I'll probably listen to it with one of you guys and then be excited about it. Yeah. yeah. You'll probably just hear it every, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. 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 No, I really like Daft Punk. No, it's oh, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna reply. No, no, gonna say so anything. my other pick of the week happened at uh, this past weekend's Malaysian Grand Prix, or, or GP, as the, the professionals call it. Yeah. So um, 
Let me give you the lowdown. We all know Red Bull is the fastest team in Formula One. So fast. Their cars are rocket ships. The fastest driver is Sebastian Vettel, the German. So fast. Because he's efficient. He's German. The Michael Schumacher prodigy. And his partner is the Australian with the big Gillette chin, Mark <laughs> Webber. Oh. He does have a really defined chin. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah. He looks like, like a, he's he's insane. insane. Yeah, it's nice. It's like, dang. I'm jealous. <laughs> Anyways, Mark is leading the race. Sebastian is in second. Remember, Sebastian is the current three times world champion. And Mark is just an agent Australian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, the team say to both boys, hold position. There's like 10 laps to go. Mark knows he's going to win this race because the team says, yes, you hold position. Sebastian, you're second. Sebastian says, fuck that. <laughs> and he goes and he tries to outrace his teammate. And they both crash. Mark has none of it, and he's like, fuck off, Seb. Fuck off. And so it's just really intense racing. Some of the best racing I've seen. Like, really well, clean, defensive driving. <laughs> and, like, smart overtaking. And then eventually, uh, Sebastian's just way too aggressive. He's like, fuck it. I'm doing it. I'm going through it. And so he, he basically puts his car in a position where it's like, hey, listen. Mark, if you don't get out of the way, we're going to crash. <laughs> So Mark's like, in his head, he's like, fuck it, I'm getting out of the way. He gets out of the way, Sebastian wins, and it was a fucking weird podium. Why? Because at the top step, Sebastian's like, yeah, I won. Second place, Mark's like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> and you know what? He can feel like he do whatever he wants, and he'll get protection from the team because he's the number one. And it's just fucking teen drama anarchy. And, like, all the press releases are, like, uh, uh, friendship shattered. It's pretty awesome. So, basically, the number one, is, the number one they wanted him to lose, be second. Yeah. Just for today. Yeah. Right? Just, just for now. Well, the thing is, they just, the, the team wanted to bring both cars in first and second to get the most amount of points. Mm. But they wanted to do it safely. They didn't want to have to, because to the team, it doesn't matter who finishes first or second to them. Yeah. You're going to get all the points because both cars are there. Yeah. Uh, but but to, to, the, the drivers. to the drivers, it matters. Because in Formula 1, there's two championships. Right. There's the drivers, and there's the team. Uh... So, the team gets all the points from both drivers. Drivers get the points on the A score. Yeah. Right? And Formula 1 is inherently broken in, in terms of their rule set. Okay. In that, uh, you win as a team, but at the end of the day, there can only be one winner. Yeah. Right? Oh, and wow. so, that's just a whole bunch of ego battle, and... I thought it was cool. And you know what? Sebastian gets a lot of criticism, and it's like, fuck. But if I were in his position, I think I would do the same thing. No, oh my should have just crashed both. He should have just stayed. He yeah. Just, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. No, he so. wanted to win, huh? So the, the funny thing is, Sebastian is like, he's known as like the nicest, youngest, probably most impressive. He was on top here, and he seems like a nice dude. He seems like, and but this is like, so the dude, but, the, but like a lot of, uh, people in the know say that behind the scenes he's like a whiny little stuck up brat oh. and it's like oh so here it comes out like his cracks in the armor he's not the perfect image we all know him as okay. and then like it's like well what did you expect he's Michael Schumacher's prodigy and Schumacher was notorious for being also a dick. an asshole okay I didn't even read your article but did you see, you, he wrote in the email sportsmanship at the GP and I thought something nice happened no I should have known better no should have known better no. Formula One should have known no. that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was it was So basically their lives were too boring. Yeah. Winning was too easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I remember cars so fast. It's stupid. Like it's oh my god. It, it, was, it was when it happened, people were just like, I can't believe this. Cause you could hear that they also put on like team radio and stuff. They're like, stop this now. This is silly. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. So cause basically what happened is the guy in front, they're like, okay, when you guys are gonna hold positions, and so Mark's like all right, I'm going to turn my engine settings down to the minimum. Yeah. And Screws. Sebastian was supposed to too, but he's like, nope. <laughs> I'm going to push my car. <laughs> Yo, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It was a really good race, though. So. Yeah, but no, it was Did a good Did you watch race. too? So you knew this happened? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was good. good. And then there's the similar thing happened at Mercedes. <laughs> what? Yeah. The, the same thing happened for, like, spots three and four. Mm. <laughs> With Lewis Hamilton and his partner. But they're just like, oh, they're doing it. We're doing it. But the difference here was like, I guess they have more mutual respect for each other. And they res the thing is they respect their boss. They're not 
idiots. Yeah. <laughs> so even though they so they they held position and they finished third and fourth. Yeah, but they were trying. They were like, ah, maybe we should fight each other. Like, ah, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, Iceman couldn't pull back to back. Yo, I told positions. you that Lotus car isn't fast. So good on tire wear. Exactly, because it's not fast. <laughs> Anyways, we're my picks of the week. That's that's freaking hilarious. Uh, Anthony, show me yours. Show, all right, hold on. <laughs> uh, my picks. Uh, the first one is a uh, so Pax East happened. That was it a thing. did. It happened in Boston. Oh shit, that's right. And yeah. so out of that came a uh, bunch. Like they do a bunch of different panels, different talks, and uh, I don't know. One of Vince's favorite game. My developers. favorite. Your, your just straight up favorite. Like, yeah, I, I, one. I think so. Yeah. Cliffy B did his own panel. He had uh, half an hour. It's pretty much story time with Cliffy B. Yeah. And he told the it, the story of his life, how uh, he grew up, what made him want to get into games, mm -hmm. what motivated him, like what were mm -hmm. his major turning points in life, and pretty much this is just a really, really interesting, con like talk to listen to. Uh, yeah, he it's it's the video will be up on the show notes if yeah. you want to watch it, and just learning about this guy's life mm -hmm. and how he went from typical nerd that got picked on all the time, and he's just like, well, I'm gonna make something of myself. I'm not gonna be a baby about it, and just just how he rose he rose through it all and to become where he is today, like one of the the most known game developers yeah. in the world, and it's just it's a really inspirational and pretty pretty inspiring talk. Yeah. I would think. Uh, he showed a lot of his old games that he made it by himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he showed showed his later works. Uh, mm -hmm. Talked about his love life. It was like it was really personal, and it seemed like a mm -hmm. seemed like he really wanted to do this. So it, it was a really interesting talk because it seemed really genuine. Yeah. So I recommend you guys. Uh, did you to that. did you take a look at this Blayman? Uh no. Oh, okay, I didn't. But I know he's the one with the hot wife, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lee yeah. Warren. I always wanted to know why she was so hot. I'm like, oh, because she's ten years his younger. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, no, twelve. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah, he was twelve. They yeah. mentioned in the Blame video. Blame she's like our age. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Banged her a rich one. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Yo, no. He started from the bottom. Now you're here. But yeah, no, like, um, but yeah, no. This is like one of the examples why I've always liked Cliffy B. He's just a really genuine guy. Right? Yeah, he's real, and like he'll admit when he makes mistakes. He yeah. won't try and cover it up with like, oh, at the time, I'll, like he even. Both found himself with the whole Gears of War 2 launch. Yeah. And he was like, ah, you can deal with it now. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, he may not be the most, I don't want to say not inspirational, because he's totally... Yeah, like, you, you could argue that the Gears of War series isn't... Yeah. Like, what I'm trying to say is he's not like... like fantastic. He's, he's not like, like Ken Levine. You know, Ken yeah, Levine. he's not He's not just like pie in the sky, like making these amazing Bioshock, like craziness. He, he knows, he can stick to a formula... And make quality yeah. of that formula, but he's not breaking molds over here. Yeah, except for except for cover based shooters, he totally he was like, "That's let's face it, he pioneered." Yeah, cover he pioneered shooters. cover based shooters. Yeah, he saw Kill Switch, and he's like, "I need to make that popular." He saw Kill Switch, and he was playing Resident Evil Four. He's like, "I have something here. I got it." But yeah, no, that was that was a really good talk, and it was I think it was one of the best ones to come out of uh, come, yeah. come out of PAX. Yeah. So give that yeah, a listen. Fun. Uh, and then the second one is Metal Gear related. Mm -hmm. So a while back, I talked about how there were two new Metal Gear games coming out. There was Ground Zeroes, mm. Zeroes, multiple Zeroes, mm. and The Phantom Pain, which had, was an anagram for Metal Gear Solid, and which was all, the director was also an anagram for H Hideo Kojima. Mm -hmm. So it turns out it's not some crazy Metal Gear Red and Blue Damn! type thing. Damn! It's just. Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Oh, that's Both a those games are the same game. That is a lot. Yeah, more it's a lot less cool. <sighs> it's way more disappointing. Yeah, it, it kind of faked me the fuck out, but that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so The Phantom Pain is the next installment in Metal Gear. It seems like it takes place somewhere after the PSP games, yeah, but before Metal Gear Solid One. So it's mm. still it's still in the past with like a, he's still big boss and. And all that stuff, uh, but I don't know. I don't really have much to say in this because they don't show much. Mm. They showed some parts that look like gameplay, but it's just a lot of, like weird acid trip type things. Like there's a whale on fire in the sky and eats a helicopter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that happens. He, they're they're on a he's on a white stallion with some other guy and he shoots a ghost rider in the face. Yeah. Who was riding a flaming horse? Yeah. Uh, it, but the thing I got, I will say about this game is that that new Fox engine looks great. 
Like, it looks so good. And it, it can look that way during gameplay, like I always say. It's going to blow my mind. Like, it's crazy. Will you be as impressed if it's a PS4 game? I kind of expect it to be a PS4 game. See, I don't think that's going to run on PS3. Exactly. And when you think of it that way, it's like, well, are you as impressed now? Well, it's okay. It's, it's obviously going to look better. But it's still <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It looks so good. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's some more Metal Gear. Hopefully, maybe this will be... Uh, like I, So far, my, my ruling has been odd-numbered games. In, or <laughs> No, even-numbered games in uh, Metal Gear are the best ones so far. Because yeah. 2 and 4 are obviously the best Metal Gear games. Mm. Riding's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you like three? Three's okay. It's no two. Oh. It's no two. It's no four. But you like three? I like three, but I want to say something. I've come to to come to terms with that. My love for Metal Gear was more so because I wanted to like Metal Gear. Because you oh. wanted to like Metal Gear. Okay. Because it was a PlayStation title. Fighting when words. I was a child. Not really. That's I'm his kidding. personal. I'm kidding. And I've come to terms with that. Metal Gear is fucking stupid. That's why I love it, cause it's so dumb. Like I'll give you, Metal Gear Solid One was a fantastic game. Two, be... three, and four just went off the rails, and it was like, what's the point? It's where it got awesome. One wasn't grounded in reality in any way. It mostly was. They're all grounded in reality. Mm. But after four, yes, everything's grounded in reality. PMCs, man. Like it's one, real, like, one only left you have a reality. Vampire robot? No. No, Nano one, machines. one was always reality. Yeah, one was, like, it's still pretty crazy how we had, like, a massive ninja cyborg. But, like, oh, you're right, yes. Yeah, that but, like, and uh, memory card switching, yeah. Yeah, but, like, dude. So you like to play Castlevania? Yeah, yeah okay, I get you, I get you. But, okay. Yeah. All those reasons you don't like Metal Gear? Yeah. I love Metal Gear for all those reasons. Yeah. I, I always thought that, like, yeah, Metal Gear's awesome. Then I was like, no. <laughs> like, as I got progressively older, I'm like, this is just fucking dumb. It's the best. Like, I want to play a game. What is going on? What am I watching? Why am I watching cutscenes of flashbacks of World War II? Like, and then there's flashbacks within flashbacks. Yeah, it's like, what is going on? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and then there's a dream sequence where I can have, like, Wolverine claws and I'm cutting up zombies in a jail. Exactly. It's the best. Uh, so yeah, this is more looks like more acid trip type stuff. Snake doesn't have an arm and he's been in a coma for like nine years. Yeah. Hey, Metal Gear fans, I'm sure you're eating it up. But um, V is back. What is that? Diamond what? Dogs? I don't see, know. Uh, these see these words. Like, what is this even? Diamond Dogs is like a PMC group or something. It's generating hype. Yeah, is that is that what the, is that yeah? What that's what all the end of all those Metal Gear trailers are. Yeah, is oh, the hype machines? Yeah, yeah, oh. oh boy. Now now I feel duped when I watch like. <laughs> The end of like uh, what is it, Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, it's like one of these secret messages. And they saw like, Kojima, and they're like, we need that. Yeah, remember I used to like look it up and see what's like, and then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You'll never know. Yeah, you'll I never literally never go anywhere with this until the next see, game. Yeah, I'll never see it coming. Yeah. Because they're just they don't even know what they want. Exactly. And they're gonna make sense of it. I after. agree. I agree. Yeah, like in Final Mix Two, when you see that big keep keep like graveyard, and you see the fight between the old guy, and it's like. I'm looking up who that old guy is. Oh, wait, he's never been shown ever until now. Ah. Until that ending. And then the PSP game came out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're making it all as long as they yeah. can. Yeah, as well. so. Hype machine. The one thing I'll say about this Metal Gear game is um, I think uh, they've lost their mind by not having David Hayter. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, here we go. Because the guy, yeah, the guy from, uh, what's it called, is the, fuck, what's that show? I said it at the, before we recorded. 24? 24. I think the guy from 24 is the voice actor for Snake. Keith Sullivan? Keith Sullivan. Sullivan, I think, yeah. Also, they used the band Garbage as the soundtrack in the background, which really doesn't You must have loved it. I did, I love Garbage, but yeah. it doesn't fit. Yeah. Like, I need, like, some Snake Eater shit, like, just hardcore, no. old Bond style. No. But yeah, it's, I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm sure some of our listeners are pumped. All I can, the listeners are pumped. All the listeners are pumped. Pumped. Kids nowadays don't give a damn. I'm pumping gear. iron for this. No, Unless we wait. I'm doing no. sets. Yeah, really? You don't think it's it's the new hotness for all the kids? No, dude. No, that that I'm that's an established franchise now. If no. you haven't been in it from the beginning, there is no way you understand anything. In this I game. know no kid who likes Metal Gear Solid Four. I was working at where was I working at? I think it was EB when that game came out. And the only people who bought it were 30-year-old no, dudes. Yeah, thought so. Who, or kids who've played the previous installments. No. 
Thirty year old dude. I was a kid who played the previous installments no. and I bought it. You bought it you you played it after the fact. What? No, I bought Metal Gear Solid 4 Day One. No, no, I mean like you played the previous installments. After. You no, didn't I, play them on launch day, did you? I played yeah, I played them at my cousin's house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause he, he I had an sixty four, but he had a PS one and I stayed at his house more often than my house, so Oh, okay. I wasn't good at it. I was just alert all day, like just headshotting people left and right. Like yeah. no stealth, but I played them. Yeah. It's like Omantis scared the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways. I remember mine, I, I played it because I heard it was such hype about it. But when I was a kid, it's like, how is this enjoyable? <laughs> it's like so bland and dark and boring. And As a kid, it's like, what is this? No rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> no, it's like, where's all the, f like, fighting? I'm not supposed to fight? No like, giant no giant, ro giant robots didn't uh, intrigue, pique your interest? How? Metal Gear has the biggest giant robot. No, or like, but I'm saying giant robots didn't pique your interest. Okay, how how long till you get to the giant robot? It's, it's always there. It's always there. You just never get to it. Yeah, you never get you never get to pilot it. What do you mean it's always there? You fight it though. You, this is, you don't. It, you see it. It's always mentioned, and then you see you see it a lot in the game. But yeah. then you fight it. Yeah, but like it never actually is there until the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm okay, being serious. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you're playing the game and you're telling me there's gonna be giant robots and I play the first twenty minutes of the game and there's not a giant, I will not be impressed. <laughs> I'm like unless you put in like armored core and say, like, okay, there's yeah. a giant robot. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is like okay, I have to go through all this story, all this yeah. as a kid. No, it's like, all this I agree. I agree. Mobile nuclear like, platforms. Cause, yeah, no, because like as a as a kid, what you're not interested in this? No, not even the slightest. I was He's a weird totally, kid. Exactly. Like, I, even the ending, I was like, I don't even feel fulfilled about watching this ending. Yeah. What did I finish? I finished it. And yeah. I was like, ah, what did I get out of this? A cool fight on top of a robot, I guess. Yeah, well, the robot chases you eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Fond memories. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I remember renting it and playing it. I didn't have the codec code. Mm. It's on the back of the box. Yeah, because yeah. they, don't, they don't use the box and mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, and then the only one I played after that was three. But I never got on my way to actually buy the games. I have the collection one, two, and three. Um, but I didn't even touch them. Yeah, you know what? I for the longest time wanted to buy the Metal Gear collection. I'm like, I don't like Metal Gear, man. <laughs> Vince, you don't like it. Yeah, you, do. you just want to like it because it's a it was a PlayStation title. That's just that's just your brain effing with you because you haven't played Metal Gear in so long. No, just pick I, it up. And I it's have. Like, oh, so good. I have. Yeah. Anyways, so, uh, uh, Metal Gear. Best franchise ever. Really, you gonna stand by that? No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I didn't think it's so. Really good though. What is Revengeance so. coming out? Revengeance is out already. Did you get it? No. Why not? Because I got Monster Hunter. The cutting, cutting, ah, oh, cutting, but cutting, cutting, but cutting. <laughs> but I watched another like trailer of it. This game is so, so. Wait for it. So absurd. Like this guy gets attacked by like a giant skyscraper of a thing. Then he Gear, right? lifts it up and runs on it while cutting it and then cuts it some more. But yeah, it's Metal Gear Rays. They're nothing now. <laughs> and then when I saw this, the only thing I could think of was that this is the game for you. Best game ever! Oh, like this is Anthony Plaster. There are little over things it. where it's like they have like they have like there's like little secrets in it. <laughs> like, like, one. Yeah. Anthony's so easy to please. There's <laughs> one there's one secret in it where there's like a cardboard cutout in the game of uh what is it? A, an idol, like yeah. a Japanese idol. And if yeah. you cut it, the the cardboard thing gets replaced with her in like leather and like more like adult gear. Hot. What the fuck? <laughs> Five stars based on that alone. <laughs> Also, JoJo's the best. Just also, you now understand my likes. Yeah. So, yeah oh, okay, right, Nathan. Uh, what's your pick again? Well, okay. You know what? Give, give I, I, I'm 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 hyped for this Metal Gear just to see what it's like, where they're going with it. But I don't think I'm gonna buy it. That's a big thing. I think I'm gonna buy it. No, you will not buy it. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, I think this will be yeah. the first Metal Gear I don't buy. You bought the rest. Holy crap! Yeah. Damn. You were forcing yourself for that long. I'm telling you, I that's was. Like, that's like, like that's like liking a girl you never liked, but like thinking, you know. What, trust I, me, growing up, the other day, growing up, I was so like pro PlayStation and Sony, but then I realized, what the fuck, Vince? There's so much out there. Why <laughs> use it open? Well, what do you do? Like, just you just walk outside one day, and like, huh? <laughs> that wasn't a good time. New, you watched Aladdin again. You're like, oh, whole new world. So. That wasn't a good time. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, and then I bought a 360. And I'm like, what the fuck was I liking Sony for? 
There's a whole world of other games out there that I can it's enjoy. It's a shame we've lost you to the box. Oh, so you admit that you're a Sony fanboy. But uh, you'll come back. It's okay. Mm. I like everything. Oh, see, this is again the Vince, the Vince problem. What? It's like, you want A or B, I'll take C, which is A and B. <laughs> I'll take well, that's a little bit of so B. I can't like all the video games? That's true. You no, can do no, that. you can't. You can pick. <laughs> and then, you know, he asked me, what type of girl, Vince? I like all the women. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, there's specific criteria. It's either he loves all women or he loves all games. There's no both in there. <laughs> yeah, man. There's specific women I cannot deal with. <laughs> all right, name them. Go. No, no. Okay, Get yeah. a, sexist, some, a sexist podcast. Some people NA. might find it offensive, so no. So, we'll be discussing this later and we'll be appalled. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so my pick of the week yeah. is, again, trading card game related. Yeah. Magic the Gathering actually was shown at PAX Whoa. East. Yeah. Uh, they released new info about Dragon's Mage, which is coming up next yeah. month. And the new set for next year. It was the next coming set after the 2014 core set. So the next set is called, uh, I think, Born from the Gods and Journey to the Nyx. So I think it's like Greek god based. That sounds like fun. Ah, I'm not really into that scene, but who knows? Maybe they can mechanics. You're not into orgies and murder. It depends, you know. If Wonder Woman is a card, then I'm there. What? If Wonder Woman is a card, <laughs> Athena, yes. <laughs> but uh, what I'm excited for is that they released a trailer about Dragon's Maze, and it's gonna be in the show notes. I'm sure it's plastered on everybody's wall, and it's the red blue planeswalker talking about the Dragon's Maze. So the Dragon's Maze is basically a maze found by the Red Blue Guild leader, who is a dragon, Niv Mizzet. Who's a dragon? He's a Niv Mizzet, and it's a maze that goes past every guild gate in the guild. So ten guilds. Yes. It passes through all their guild gates, and it comes to an end. And I don't know what's there. And the challenge is that the dragon said, "Yo, listen, bros. Sorry for keeping it from y'all, but to be fair." All of you get to send a champion to try and get to this mm -hmm. maze end. So that's the whole story about this. I don't know what's at the end. I don't know what, what it's about. Apparently in the books they tell you what it is. And There's books? Yeah. I find it crazy how much you love this lore. Oh, no, I love this lore. <laughs> like, And it just can't find any of it anywhere. Like, it's so barren, this lore. Oh, but blame it. And like somehow it gets you to buy cards. I don't understand it. <laughs> So, the thing, when I was watching this trailer, what I've realized, that Planeswalker who's explaining the story, yeah. he is the Nathan Drake of magic. He does sound like Nathan Drake. He, he, he's an adventurer. He looks, like he looks like him. He needs to find fucking artifacts and shit. Like, he is, he is the Nathan Drake. Uh, I'm surprised he's not voiced by Nolan North. Like, he does look like him with a, sh with a shaggy... Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so, yeah, um... And they release details about the next set. So I, I told you last time what the the mythic land is. It's the yeah. maze end. Tap, add one colorless. Pay three, tap. Put a guild in, get in play. And if you control ten, you win. Um, but, yeah, so what they're doing with this set is that every card pack, instead of having a land, they're going to put a gate in. But what's cool about it is that all the gates have been previously released already and returned to Ravnica in Great Crash. Just used sets previously. But all the art is now zoomed out. Because usually you just see the gate. But yeah. now they're zooming it out so you can see the gate and its surroundings. Okay. So they all look really pretty. Um, second thing is that each guild has their representative champion that they're sending into the maze. Yeah. So Blavin, being a sucker for all this, is eating the shit up. Yeah. Clearly. Like, like I am just... How many drafts are you going to to get I'm all going of to the... all the drafts. When are these drafts? I don't even know. I'm fantasy drafting my head right now. When do they start? Uh, the pre-release is April 26th to 27th, I think. Um, and then the set releases in, like, May-ish. The weekend of Iron Man? I think so. And then there's going to be drafting going on and stuff. And okay. I'm really excited about that. So, yeah, I'm just... I guess I'm a really big fan of identifying with the guild. Like, yeah. there's different guilds. No, I get it. No, I get that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the whole god thing is like, ah, they're all just generally there. You yeah. know what I mean? But this is like, oh, there's ten separate things. Yeah. And I think that's why I like this draft format because I don't need to think that much. It's like, oh, oh, these are all the best black cards. These are all the best. No, it's like, there's red, black. It's open. I should go red, black. And it'll push me down that path. I really yeah. wish that Magic had like just a really extensive lore book that I could read. 
yeah. about this. But there, there is a lot of lore though with magic. There's tons of lore with magic because their their main colored planeswalkers, like for each color, have all been around for like the longest time. Well, I guess more like a compendium, like uh, yeah, a one stop yeah. shop that I could just pick up and then learn. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think Wizards of the Coast know, like, if they only put up this to get a fan this riled up, hey, hey, <laughs> why should hey, they go any further? Hey, you're pointing with all five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they know how to sell it to me. Income's gone, so it's all set aside. So it's gonna be good. It's gonna be no. Good. I, I I understand that. That's how I am with toys. Add in a little bit of Lore? fiction or or anything into it. Nerd burner. Yeah, and it'll get me more into it. Yeah. So I'm really excited for the set, as you can tell. And yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. I know you will. Oh, I, oh, you will. I definitely. Oh, will. you will. I, I most likely. Will. I think. I think this might get you off Monster Hunter. No. No. Well, it doesn't come until April. No, so. it doesn't. Doesn't it? This doesn't cost me like thirty bucks a week, Monster Hunter. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. This is okay. what he plays in between his draft games. He plays Monster Hunter in oh, between his draft games. Laggy. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's it for my pick. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Now a short word from our non-sponsors. Sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the letter V and the number three. Check them out over at typev3.podbean.com. Yeah, right. Did you really think we were going to have a sponsor? We're not that cool. Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And this is your editor saying hello, and I'm out of here. And welcome back. <laughs> Uh, this is the Three Nerds in the Basement podcast, if you've already forgotten. And uh, we're going to talk about what we've been doing the past week. Mm -hmm. So apart from Monster Hunter, which admittedly has taken up quite a bit of our time, uh, Laban, why don't you tell me what else you've been doing? So in the, during my Monster Hunter requests, I've been watching a little show called Gundam Wing. <gasps> is this new? I've never heard of this no, before. No, it's 1995, actually. And I think, well, if somebody can confirm for me, did it come after Jigunum? I think it did. Uh, no, it came before. Are you sure? I thought Jigunum was ninety-seven. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm recently got my hands on. Nope, nineteen ninety-four. So it was the year before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> watching this show, what a change! We mm. go from racist. Super robots. Tequila Gundam. <laughs> Tequila Gundam. To straight up political intrigue. Mm -hmm. How did the kids manage? Like they're just like, we shining Gundam! Wing Zero! What? The country's deficit is in disarray. Well, okay, I think I think I can answer your question. Go. In like So in Japan, Gundam from the very beginning has always been more political yeah, stuff. Intrigue, yeah. Nineteen ninety two or ninety one was the first year the Braves came on the scene. Okay. The Braves are the most popular form of super robots through yeah. the 90s. Mm. Yeah. Sunrise saw the popularity because Sunrise also does the Gundam shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they saw how popular the toy sales were. Yeah. And we all know cartoons and anime is made to sell, sell. merchandise. Wait, what? <laughs> Shit, what? <laughs> it's not an art form to tell a story? And when they saw how great... Uh, is it, is it X Geyser? I think yeah. that was the first one. Uh, was doing in sales. I think they wanted to see if they could do with Gundam. And did they? I think the uh, the Gundam community actually dropped in sales because it wasn't what they wanted. Okay. However, it is a, one of the greatest super robot shows out there. <laughs> so okay, wait, is it the greatest or is it the greatest, air quotes? One, what, what do you mean? G Gundam. As a super robot yeah, show? As, uh, as, yeah, as, okay, as a super robot show, yeah. I think, I think, it's, it's, I think it's one of the best. It's, okay. I think it's really iconic, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I went to it's Japan, really memorable. when I went to Japan, I, I did the Domo and quote. Like, the, yeah. my hand went in Japanese, and everybody in the shop knew it. Yeah. They're like, oh, shit. Yeah. No, they're like, whoa, with this kid. <laughs> and it's like, yo. But it's like, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so I'm watching the show, and holy crap. As a child watching this on YTV, so much passed over my head. Oh. Like, it's just like, who's Lady Un? What is Oz? Who's Trey's? Who's Moliari Peacecraft? Who's Ex Marquis? Who's, like, who are these people? I just want to see Gundam fights. Sex Where's Death Sight? He's one of the he's one of the the five the five yeah. Gundam pilots and it's like wow and I all I always thought that this show was gonna be like 
the Gundam pilots are super smart yeah. and they're the driving force. No. No. They're kids. Yep. They're 15 year olds. They're dumb. Yeah. Did you, uh, um, <laughs> did, when you were a kid, did you remember that the pilot for Heavy Armors wasn't the real Troll Barton? Yes. Okay. This from the show, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And the real Troll Barton died. Yeah. And he's a mechanic. And yeah. He took his name. Yeah. Yeah. And, but like, I was like, what? Like, because in the first five episodes, they accidentally kill all the pacifists. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I watched this episode when I was a kid because I remember because at the end of that episode, Lady Un throws a guy off the plane and shoots him in the head. And I'm like, as a kid, I'm like, I don't know why that happened. Yeah. That guy got messed up. Mm -hmm. Who was he? And like, was he important kind of thing. And now I realize like, yeah, shit, that was important. And like, I'm having so much more fun with this show now. Watching it like this. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really, really now like the Tall Geese. Tall Geese is awesome. I used to think of such a shit suit until they explained it. Yeah. How it's like the forerunner for all mobile suits. Yeah. And it's more advanced than all the other ones. I'm like, what? <laughs> and Who's, the guy, what? Who's the guy with the curved blades? Uh, Sandrock. Sandrock. Sandrock, okay. Yeah. And uh, my favorite Yaoi pair is oh. actually Troy and Quattro. Really? Because at one point, Quattro is playing the violin, and Troy takes a flute and starts making music too. Yeah. Hot. Hot Yaoi. So now, your fan pick now that you're watching again, is Sandrock still your favorite of the five? No. Ooh. Oh. Because mine used to be that side, but after going through it again, I'm all on heavy arms. You're all on heavy arms? Yeah. He is... Really cool. Like, Troa is really... Yeah. I'd fall for him if I met him. Yeah. Because he's ignoring me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize how big of a dumbass Hero is. Yes! He's not very smart or calculating. Hero Yui? Yeah. Or badass in any way. Nope. He has skills, but he doesn't learn to apply them well. Mm -hmm. Wu Fei, I think, is the smartest out of all of them. It's because he's Chinese military. I remember yeah. Wu Fei being pretty badass. Yeah. Well, let's face it, Zex was badass. Oh, Zex is so sexy. Yeah. Just everything he... I His didn't... name is almost Sex. Like I didn't realize... Zex Marquis. <laughs> I didn't realize he's nice to people. Mm-hmm. I always thought he was evil. As yeah, a kid. but he, like, really cares for all his subordinates. Yeah. He doesn't want them to die. Oh, right, he has the the, the girl. Yeah, Noin. Yeah, Noin. And he, like, oh, loves God. her. Noin. And, like, I love and he's always like, listen, you guys don't need to go fight we can escape and he's like no we'll fight for you he's like they're so loyal to him yeah, and they're like thank you he's like thank you and he means it yeah and I'm like what <laughs> yeah. so pass up is an idiot <laughs> yeah so I think that me now watching this yeah. gonna win I think it's opening my eyes a lot I think I'm gonna enjoy the show a lot more now that yeah. I'm learning about it and I can't wait to get to the parts that I remember as a kid like in space because I'm sure that's where everything heats up and also tying it into endless waltz oh uh, yeah yeah, so... Yeah, Zex is my favorite in Endless Waltz, where uh, he has the Tall Geese 3. And he becomes... He's Peacecraft again? Yeah, he's just unstoppable. He's pretty <laughs> badass. He is. Yeah. He just, like, heat... Oh, he has the heat whip, and he just, like, trips people. And yeah, yeah. It's blue and gray, right? Yeah. The Tall Geese 3, yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. I think the one you're watching now, it's, like, white and red. It's white and... Yeah, red for the, the head, and then he yeah. has the black boosters in the back. Yeah. 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 Um... And Trace Kushinada, I think, yeah, he's just... That is also a sick name. Trace Kushinada? He's just ultimately a bad dude? Well, yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> and then this this show also does the whole fine line between who's right and who's wrong in trying to find world military peace. Oh, yeah, it's like, there is no good or bad, only opinion is protective. Oh, God. Yeah. And, oh, Relina Peacecraft. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're just losing it. This girl, it's just like... Stupid. She's pretty terrible. Yeah. Like, she just, she's one of those characters like, Hero, don't kill that person. He's like, oh, dude, he's gonna get killed. <laughs> like, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Smack. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I, I'm having a lot of fun with this show. But the voice actor for Duo, I must say, though, is very memorable. I remember his voice and, like, laughs. It's very familiar. He's, um... Johnny Obot? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish. I mean, he's Don Obot. What? Yeah, he's Dinobot, he's Wasp Meter, and Silverbolt. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I his name is not coming to me right now. Wait, are you watching this in English? Yeah, it's all in English. What? Yeah, yeah, so the reason I can watch and play at the same time is because it's in English. Yeah, I can listen. And 
the animation is pretty bad, so it's not like I'm missing. Wait, wait, can you can you hear it? Can you hear it? Right. It's just it's just nerds yelling in outrage at their computers. <laughs> oh god. It's not Japanese, what the fuck? Oh I know. But I think that's great. But even even in Japanese, I think Hero's decisions are still stupid. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I realize now that all the reason he made himself look cool is because he kept self-destructing himself. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh what is it? Twin beam rifle? Boom, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Zero system! Oh, I'm gonna self destruct! Boom! <laughs> and the second thing I've been doing with my week is I watched all of season three of Archer. How many episodes? Is 12, I think. Oh, okay. And boy, did I have fun with that show. Yeah? It's still as good as I remember. Witty, sarcastic. The timing is great. The voice acting is great. The stories are just. <laughs> they try to be grounded in reality, but they're still just absurd. Bionic Berry. Yeah, and they're all like. When it comes down to their personal lives, like one time there was a dinner party. Yeah. Because somebody got killed in the apartment, and that made me lose my shit because I was just laughing so hard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That whole episode messed up. That whole episode was hilarious. Dinner party! Calpurnia! <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Sploosh. Yeah, so, yeah, I really recommend it. It's on all of Netflix, and I heard season four is out too. Only oh, like, airing? Yeah, I didn't realize that, so I'm not going to check that out. Cool. Yeah, that's all of our week besides Monster Hunter. So. Oh, yes. Uh, Blavin is done. So Anthony's next. <laughs> Set the order? All right. <laughs> uh, so other than Ultimate Monster Hunter, I also picked up uh, Final Fantasy Theatrhythm. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, you shit. did. You had, to, you had to confirm that. <laughs> uh, but, so I'm late to the party on this one. Uh, uh, people, about a year. Yeah. People should know it's the Final Fantasy Rhythm game. It, uh... Can we just call it Dance Dance? Dance Dance Final Fantasy? Yeah. We need to think of like a really clever title of that. We'll, 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 we'll crowdsource. We'll think of something. We'll crowdsource. We'll come back to you next week. We'll see. Uh, but this is... I need rhythm games pretty much in my life. Uh, what, you I, do? I really, really enjoy rhythm games in general. And rhythm games enjoy you. You like, like Elite Beat Agents? and Yeah, I love Elite Beat Agents. I, like, I got... I almost beat it on Elite Beat Divas, like yeah. the really hard mode. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. So, since I haven't played Rock Band in like a long time, mm-hmm. uh, I haven't played any rhythm games in like oh. forever. Oh no, man. Withdrawal. Itch. Oh, God. So now that I'm playing, like when TJ first got the Atch Rhythm, like yeah. that's all I wanted him to do when I came over is give me your DS and yeah. let me get you stuff. Yeah. And now that I have my own, like I'm just playing it all the time. Every time I'm not playing Monster Hunter or League, I'm playing the Atch Rhythm. Mm. Like, and it's it's really fun too because all the songs are only like I don't know four minutes, so it's not really taking a chunk or like it's not really a, you know, I'm not really dedicated to this right. I can just do a quick song, jump out, come back later, do a quick song, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, it's just a, it's also a really fun game like leveling up your party based on how you're doing the song, um, doing uh, just getting new items, new uh, you can get new skills and stuff to. Min max in different the different types of the rhythm games yeah and stuff like that and that's really fun and also the dark notes it, it really throws uh different twists on the song like they have different uh difficulties and like random difficulties and the notes are always different and stuff and so that's fun and it's just overall uh it's it's a good game it's a good time it's a good time killer and yeah. it's a good rhythm was it, game was it how much was it it was 29 almost there yeah I almost picked there. I picked up the the was the last copy at Evie's. Zara Gotta look elsewhere, son. No, I don't know. the copy. I don't know Amazon. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Internet shopping. Oh. Ruined it. Damn it, right? God damn, you're so convenient. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but no, it, it's really good. No, it, I played it. It's it is a really good rhythm game. Yeah, I'm not a fan of rhythm games at all, but I would consider buying this if it were like twenty bucks. Okay. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is I've been street passing like crazy. But why? Because well, it's why? there. Pretty pretty much I've realized the the only reason I'm street passing is because it's an option. Mm-hmm. And it's an addicting option. You have a charm on your 3DS? Yeah, I do. It's what is it? Nico Robin from oh, One Piece. Okay. I want to put one too. Yeah, same. I'm thinking just to call my sister and be like, yo, get me some sort of... Yeah, so I stuff. realized the next convention I go to, I need another I need another chain. Yeah. Uh, so on, on my pink 3DS... Yes! Your, pink and, your powder pink and my white... My powder pink and white 3DS, I have a keychain... Of a girl character from One Piece. Yeah. So obviously I'm on the pinnacle of manliness over here. Yeah. But also, so the street pass thing is really fun, and I didn't expect it to be fun. So the the main thing that people use is 
the Me Plaza. Me Plaza. Where you meet other people as you walk by and you get new... But the other one thing is like you get puzzle pieces to make different 3D pictures. And that's kind of whatever. But the, the other one is the game called Find Me. Where mm. every time you meet new people, you get new warriors. And you can use those warriors to go down a dungeon and... Basically, you have to go through... I can't believe you're actually talking about this like it's a real game. It is a real game. Shut up. And uh, so <laughs> so you go down, and uh, every time you, you... If you meet someone multiple times, they level up, they get stronger. Totally. Right? And, and you got to go through this dungeon. And then once you beat floors, you get treasure chests that have accessories for your me. Mm. And they're, they're all Nintendo-themed. Like, I got a Pikmin hat. Uh, yeah. What else did I get? I got a Luigi hat. Like, yeah. I, got, I got some stuff. And yeah. uh, It's just addicting. I just want to see what the next... Um, what the next accessory is. And when I see people street passing, like some guy was wearing a Metroid on his head. It's like, I want that. I don't know. I still don't know how to equip these accessories, but I want it. What? I don't know how to equip the, the all the hats I have, but I just, wow. I'm just collecting them. Wow. Okay. But I don't know. It's, it's surprisingly fun. And then also the street passes with the other games, like uh, with Monster Hunter. Okay, I'll give you that. Those are cool. That's that's a really really good use of. Okay, the one thing I will say about Monster Hunter, if I have to mention, it's one of the, it's one of the only games I've seen so far I've, I've I've experienced where the 3D actually I feel it adds to the game. Like seeing those, uh, seeing those big monsters and like all my equipment like on a different plane and like mm -hmm. I can depth perception and all that. It really adds to the experience of Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot to mention that. But also their their uh, guild thing, their their guild street card. pass. You get guild cards of people you walk by, and you can hire those hunters. So yeah. sometimes you'll find someone who's just like totally decked out and crazy shit, yeah. and it's like go hunt me all this stuff for free and get me stuff and get me uh, free items and stuff. Uh, or even with the atrium, where if you street pass with someone, you get a new dark note to unlock in their like uh, their like hard mode, their extra mode or whatever. Yeah, I will say the street pass feature for. For actual games is really neat. yeah yeah and I it's it's exciting it's exciting to yeah. to uh, I want to see what people can do with street pass like yeah it's a really interesting idea and it's always surprising to me how many street passes I get mm -hmm. and by surprising I mean more than zero mm -hmm. uh so but when I'm in the school like when I'm in my school I'm just out like I was at the mall the other day and I street pass with like five people yeah. I was like how do all these people have 3ds's like where are all these people and I'm just mess mystically walking by them oh. Well, to be fair, let's face it, you went to a video game store. <laughs> I didn't go to EB that game, that day. I went you, to the food court. Ah, you walked by it. No. I went. I came down the food court entrance and I went to the Oh, food interesting. Court. Yeah. And it was just in the food court. Maybe there's, there's a lot of kids there. Maybe they had 3DSs. I don't know. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, like, it's it's, it's crazy. It's fun. Uh, it's, it's a really cool feature that I didn't think... I, in my head, when I first heard it, I'm like, it's fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm actually experiencing it, it's really cool. Of course. Yeah. That's how it always happens. Yeah. You're a cool feature. I, I am. Cool. Totally. And then uh, the last thing I've been doing with my week is I watched a Western movie. Oh, God. <sighs> those kind of movies. Oh, no, it's not a Western. Uh, like a Western animation movie. So it was... Uh, no, I know. Those DC. are waste of time. Yes. Yeah. It yeah, was... Man. Anime is weird. It was a DC movie. It was... Uh, <laughs> it was Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. So what drew you to this one of all of them? I, just, it was on, it, I saw it on the menu. Oh, okay. And I clicked it. That's no thought or process, process behind it. Yeah. Uh, it's because I've figured out a way to get American Netflix on my computer. Yep. So I, I, it was only on American Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it. And I gotta say, like, the more mystic and super-powered side of DC is fucking crazy. Holy crap. I didn't realize this because I don't know about comics. Like, the, on, the my only experience into the comic world is Suicide Squad. Honestly, you should just pick up, like, a Green Lantern book. Probably. And, like, the... The only, like, kind of mystic thing I've seen so far is Regulus. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's kind of cool, but he's no dark side. He's no, I'm gonna punch Superman so hard that it makes the earth below me crack. Yeah. And, like, do all kinds of crazy shit like that. And, like, uh, what is it? The the female Furies, his, like, team of all fam female soldiers. Mm -hmm. Big Barda, who has the, the mother box. <clears throat> and, like, this is, it was an information overload, pretty much, on the the yeah. more insane side of yeah. DC Comics and yeah. it was really fun learning about Supergirl learning about oh, more about Superman and Batman Supergirl's like awesome yeah, Supergirl's pretty good she's one of my favorites in this movie she looks like a stripper Supergirl always looks like a like an underage teen stripper I did not realize this until now actually you know what all the teen superhero girls look like strippers yes they do I looked up what's a Power Girl yeah for some reason they, they mm. even made a joke about God, this Power Girl's she cute. has a bulletproof 
thing, but yeah. some, for some reason she cut a hole in her cleavage, and even her friend is like, you have a bulletproof protective clothing, but you're cutting a hole in it yeah. where your heart is. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just crazy. It, it led me down this wiki path of who are all these crazy people and just reading about powers and like reading yeah. what the Omega beams do and like all this fucking insane shit. What the mother box is fully capable of. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a sentient computer that you wear on your wrist. It's just, it's just crazy. And it, it's, it's really cool. And it, it makes me want to p pick up like, I'm kind of too late to pick up back issues and stuff now of like Green Lantern of the New 52 and like the more space stuff yeah. I feel. So like, but like, if it, when a trade comes out for that kind of stuff, I think I'm probably gonna pick one up, and I'll probably love it because it's all fucking insane space bullshit. <laughs> probably, yeah, insane space probably. bullshit. I like it. Yeah, and so yeah, it's been fun. Like, it uh, it was it was a, I was surprised to see how different it was from Suicide Squad. Oh, like, they're gonna say from anime. No, from from <laughs> Suicide Squad. Like how how the same universe can be so drastically different. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's how it is, right? Also, Amanda Waller isn't dick. Well, well, she is the head of Checkmate. Yeah, so I mean, she's kind of... She can do whatever she wants. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's her job. She's the <laughs> You'll put a bomb in your neck. Mm. Dude, you're an asshole shit. Well, again, that's her job. Yeah. That's yeah, and, and that's it. That's been, that's been my week. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep up on the DC stuff. Uh, you guys remember about a year ago, we reviewed a show called Young Justice. Young Justice. Well, the show has just had its series finale. It's two oh. seasons long. Like, for good? For oh. good. Oh, I'll tell you why. It got canceled. Hot. It got canceled because... Uh, it's too good? No, so I thought that this whole... Uh, how should I tell you? Okay. Remember when I said the second... I was in love with this show? Yeah. Second season, five-year time skip. I didn't know what to think about it. Yeah. The whole second season was just pandering beyond pandering beyond pandering. And it was just drawn-out arc... And eventually it ended. So I thought that it got cancelled because the story sucked. Mm -hmm. No. It got cancelled because of poor toy sales. And unfortunately, I go on a lot of hunts for toys. I did not see a single Young Justice figure anywhere. So is that just because they never made any? I don't know. Mattel is kind of weird like that. Weird. Anyways, um, yeah, second season of Young Justice, Justice was a disappointment. I thought that with this five-year time skip, what they were going to do was con continuous flashbacks and, and show you what happened in that five years. But nope. So they literally just time skipped for no reason. Um, hmm. And, yeah. The other thing, too, is it takes place in one of the 52 universes that has no relation to anything else in the comics. Which okay. one is this? Pardon? Which one is this? Young Justice? No, like which universe? You said a universe? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember the... the Earth 12. I can't Weird. remember the actual name, but Weird. like, it doesn't have any bearing on what's happening in... We'll say... D is it DC Prime? What is the... I don't even know these uh, these newfangled yeah. comics. So, and... You know what? I'm glad it got cancelled, because I mean, as much as I loved the first season of Young Justice, the second one was just completely boring and... I didn't like any of the new characters they introduced. I, I didn't like it when uh, Tim Drake took a backseat to... Superboy? No, he just took a backseat to the show. Oh, hello. Like, when he, once he became Nightwing, it was like, okay, I'm not even part of this team anymore. I'm out. Well, it sounds like something Nightwing would do. Huh? So that what? sounds like something Nightwing would do. Yeah. It's like, he's like, I'm out. I don't want to be part of this team. And it's like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Whatever, Young Justice, it's over. I'm glad. Before you get off the DC thing, uh, did you guys see the the Infinite Crisis game that's coming out? Oh, the MOBA. Yeah, it's a it's a DC League of Legends. Yeah. Yeah, that looks crazy. Like it looks good, or it, is no, it... like I don't think it'll be fun to play. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But to see all those characters mashed up in one game seems really cool. The one I'm actually more excited for is the Marvel uh, Diablo style one. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, what's all the Marvel... It's the same thing. All yeah. the Marvel characters, but it's Diablo. Okay. So you just pick which one you want to go in with, yeah. and you have your powers. Dropped off comics so hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't... You're know. like, trading card games? Come! <laughs> it's like, Z-52 is like, they reset everything. I'm like, again? I just took all of those years. <laughs> it's not resetting it on me. Yeah. You can still yeah. buy the old stuff. Yeah, but it's just like, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, and the next thing, what did I do? Oh, yes, that's right. I beat Tomb Raider. What? Oh, finally. 
Yeah, unfortunately, due to Mother Thunder, my Tomb Raider excursion had been delayed. Anyways, fantastic game th all the way to the end. The ending is really... Um, Crappy good? No, it's really good. And they, they, they do throw in like a little like nod to Tomb Raider fans. Okay. Like, uh, I don't want to spoil it because it's kind of cool the way it happens. Don't spoil it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really neat. All right. And then, and then I went back in to collect everything. And holy shit, I didn't realize how much I had to do. <laughs> yeah. How many Joker emblems are there? Holy crap. What I want to say is that, um, in, you know how when you play Uncharted, there's those little things you can collect? Yeah. And then they show you, and you're like, oh, that's neat. Move on. Yeah. In Tomb Raider, when you catch something, Lara narrates a little bit about it. Like, okay. she'll say one or two lines. And it just makes it so much more enjoyable than just picking up an object and okay. looking at it. Okay, that's the opposite of what I thought you were going to say. No, no. And then you can you rotate the object with, like, the dual sticks, and then it'll vibrate. Can you use the six axis? No. Damn. Weird. And then it'll vibrate, and then it'll be like... And Laura will spot something else about it. What? Oh, cool. So it's really neat. Uh, it just makes collectibles a lot more enjoyable. That's all I really wanted to say. I thought it was going to be like, oh, you see it. It unlocks another piece of paper inside it. And then you No, no, okay. So one of them was like, oh, my God. There's like this, this uh, ancient Japanese statue. This is quite an amazing find. You turn around, made in China. This is a fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, like, it's really neat things like that. Or, like, you can piece together whole side stories. Like, you find a toy, and it belongs to a girl. Then you find, like, uh, a book that belongs to another girl. Uh -huh. And you're like, what are these doing here? And then you find a wallet. It's a, it's a father's wallet with his family and a picture with the two names. You're like, what happened to this family? Uh -huh. Like, it's real oh, cool okay. stuff like that. Um, but, no, Tomb Raider's fantastic game. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I was going to play Fire Emblem Awakening. But then I played Monster Hunter. Then you didn't. Um, I have Bioshock Infinite and the Season Pass for DLC. What? But then I played Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you have Bioshock Infinite? Yeah. What? I also have that steel book case. Um, what I did do, though, was I got a book. It's called Firefly Celebration. You don't read. I know I don't read, but I had to pick this up because I was like, I saw it in the comic book store and I was like, oh, I really want that. At the comic book shop, it's 50 bucks. Uh, on Amazon, it's 35 So I went with Can't Amazon. Compete. And uh, it's really cool for the Firefly fan. It's really nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's brown. It's brown. It's brown. Brown coat. Um, it's leather bound. It's uh, got the nice logo on the front. Comes with a whole bunch of lithographs and stuff. What's neat, though, is that um, if you guys have seen like things like the Hyrule Historia or any other sort of omnibus or encyclopedia for a franchise there's it's nice uh contents and everything's indexed this thing is meant to follow the series as you're watching it mm. oh, so it's weird. structured episodic and throughout the book will be sprinkles of uh character profiles so when you read like the first page it'll show you captain malcolm reynolds or nathan fillion but only tell you what you should be knowing up to this point okay. in the series. Oh. And then it goes on and shows you other things in that episode, like where did this costume come from or some behind the scenes. It even has the full script to each episode. Whoa. And then, yeah, so it, it's it's a really good thing to follow along. Um, so I really want to try to do, like I want to watch Firefly with full commentary on and do this whole thing. And I expect thing. a book report by the end of the year. <laughs> This is the book report, man. No, you gotta report your findings to me. It's what, got these, what new things you've It's learned. got these wonderful pictures of Nathan Fillion and crew. Nice, Nathan Fillion <laughs> and crew, I guess. Nice nice high-res shots. Um, yeah, no, it's really neat. And there's a... I can't wait to go through it. I just gotta find time to do this. Because uh, as it stands right now, I've got too many video games to play. So, yeah. But no, I think that's it for my week. Um... Oh, the other thing I wanted to comment on, this just came out like recently, I think Anthony saw this too. So, Blavin, I made a video game. Okay, hypothetical situation. Yeah. How much would I have to sell for it to be considered successful? Uh, so, $60 retail. That's what you're selling it at. Yes. How do you how much to make it successful? Yeah. Uh, just ballpark it. You don't have to worry about 100,000 copies. 100,000 copies? That's actually yeah. really low. Oh, okay. Shit. To guess. More? Okay. Wait, are we giving him Blockbuster? Like, oh, AAA. Yeah, mean... AAA or like, okay, like yeah, let's go Atlas triple. style. AAA? We'll, we'll go AAA. Because like, if it was Atlas, 100K, that's good. Yeah. Okay, wait, fine, fine. 500,000. That's still not enough? No, that's pretty good. That's okay, yeah. That's pretty okay, good. Okay, why, why are these questions? I don't understand. Tomb Raider sold 3.4 million copies 
And Square Enix says that it is a failure. So Square Enix has been saying that about all their games released lately. Yeah. Sleeping Dog sold 1.3 million. The, the, failure. Yeah. Hitman sold 1.6 million. Yeah. Failure. Now Tomb Raider sells 3.4. And the thing with Sleeping Dogs and Hitman is that is to date. Yeah. Tomb Raider has just been out for Na- like three weeks. Yes, just since its release. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Why are they so hard on themselves? I, I don't think it's that. The thing is, Square Enix is only like bagging down the American side of Square Enix. Yeah, those are all American made games. Yeah. Oh. And I think the issue is stems from the fact that because <laughs> Mr. Mr. Zipperman, Tetsuya Nomura, is not putting out anything. Right, we don't have a final. Fantasy. He's drawn zippers. What do you want? We don't got a Kingdom Hearts. We don't got none of the big titles. Uh, uh, I guess Square is hoping that these American games will back them up. Yeah, because I don't think it's to the point where it's like, oh, this game only sold this much. It's a failure. I think it's totally profitable. I just think that it's in the grand scheme of Square Enix's accounts and bookings. They're like, we don't have enough profit to consider ourselves. Yeah, as a company, they're not making yeah. the money back solely on these games, which they shouldn't. Yeah. That's a bad business model. Yeah. They just made like 700, no, 20, 20, 20, $210 million. Off Tomb Raider. Off yeah. Tomb Raider alone. Yeah. And that's a failure? The thing, that's why I like. It's not that the game. How much did the game take to make? Yeah, that's not it. That's, that's not it. it. Like the game would. Pro- I would. I would ballpark that the game's probably to like two million to make. Oh, I don't. Know. I think it's more like sixty million. Like sixty, like way million. more than that. Yeah, I think it's like mm, forty. How much million. was Gears Three? Gears Three, I think that was like around fifty. Oh, okay, my my ballparks are way off. I'm thinking like PS2 days. Yeah. Well, you have to think, like, it's over a period of time, right? Yeah. And Tomb Raider's been restarted a couple and, times. Oh, yeah, it was restarted a bunch. But, no, they yeah. obviously made back their money on Tomb Raider. Oh, totally. No, no problem. But it's just that, in the grand scheme so of things... So this is, this is the news that you got? Yeah, and I'm just like, man, Square, like, I don't, I don't understand the problem here. All you gotta do is throw out Kingdom Hearts 3, boom, you're the richest company in history. I like know. I don't know why they're honestly, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and on, yeah, and their American side is like the only thing making the money right now. Exactly. Like I don't understand why don't they just suck it up and make the Final Fantasy VII remake? That it's gonna. It doesn't matter if it's a bad game. It's seven. It's gonna fuck it. It has cloud bajillions. We are gonna be like, oh my god, Aaron, she died again. No. I think like the only thing on the horizon for Square at this point is that Final Fantasy X re-release. And that. And that's like that. And Final Fantasy X is obviously taking a back seat to X two. Yeah. But like that's. <laughs> oh, you agree? Oh you yeah. Agree? Totally. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. I heard uh, Kingdom Hearts three is coming next year. Fuck off. Yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I look so. You guys gonna buy one point five? Don't know if I should be excited. Gonna be excited. I'm a sucker for Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if it's like super convoluted that plot yeah. i just really love jumping into disney worlds yeah, i care too. nothing about the portable games yeah no yeah like don't. the ds games i give no shits about well that, wait no that's not true I, I did like chain of memories the gba game the card when it was just purely cards and stuff yeah yeah that was fine but i, I played the 3d <laughs> i played the 3d remake Sorry, it was okay dream. P- What's wrong with you, man? No, it's my one dream. And the only, that was a great game because yeah. it was all cards. Was and the, cards. the main reason I really like the PSP game yeah. is that it's just a console game, but on on the go. Yeah. Is the 3DS one worth it? Dream Drop Distance? <laughs> Did you just, nope. Don't even, do, just give me this look. Don't even think about it. Yeah, I don't know why they're just throwing out all these little... I don't know what's wrong with Square. They need a third game. They need big-ass keyplay battles. They need dudes in night suits. And they need King Mickey to show up. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I don't know. Bring back Maleficent, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, don't worry, Tomb Raider. I love you. You are successful. Don't worry, Laura. It's okay. Game of the Year 2013. <laughs> Yo, whatever. Right, Playman? You know what? Your Game of the Year 2013. Take it. What? It's gonna... There's gonna be at least five more this year. I kind of just want to <laughs> say from now until the end of the year that every new game I play is 2013 Game of the Year. Monster Hunter. 2013 game of the year. No, that's not game of the year. 2013 game of the year. I know what my game of the year is. Mm. Vanguard. Ride to Victory? Yeah, Ride to Victory. Final Fantasy Theatrhythm. 2013 game of the year. Oh, wait. Last year. (laughs) Oh, wait. Yeah, but anyways. No, now I have to make the hard choice. Do I start Fire Emblem or do I start Bioshock? You start Fire Emblem. Start Bioshock. That's a fucking hole. You start Bioshock, it's shorter. Now I'll never see you again. And then you can unlock 1999 mode. 
Eh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know why I bought Bioshock, guys. I, I knew it. You succumbed to the hype. Yeah, I did. I read those reviews, and I'm like, okay, I gotta be in this. This game is immaculate. Is it? Is Gift it? upon God. Is that what they said? Pretty much. Yeah. This, this game has, like, a Metacritic of, like, 97. What? Which is yeah. stupid. Yeah, it's so high. The thing is, I thought... I didn't even like the original Bioshock all that much. What? Yo, this game. I didn't even hear anything about it. Yeah. And, you know what? It was a good deal, though. It does come with the first Bioshock. It's free? It's Have you beat free? the first Bioshock? Yeah. Then how's that a deal to you? I, I, I'm just saying as a value proposition. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Coming from you? But you don't collect things like I do. No, I don't. But I'm just saying as a value proposition, mm. you get two games for the if you, I can see if you haven't played it, but I'm saying specifically to you. I haven't played it on console. It's not different. What? I beat the first Bioshock on PC. What? Play PC games? What? You used a mouse? What? Or a keyboard? Whoa, what? Yeah. 2007? Yeah. yeah. yeah clicked right. on things? Right. Yeah. Wow. Hated every second of it. Oh, okay. Like, oh, there you go. Oh. There you go. W- I, I will say, you know what? It looked gorgeous. Water effects, oh yeah, the water—it looked great. But... Whose PC did you play on? Mine. Oh, your Mac? Yeah, my MacBook could handle it. Yeah, I could run on Max. This is two thousand seven. Yeah, this game's old by now. Oh. Two thousand seven. My MacBook Pro could run the thing at like ultra settings. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Bioshock Infinite. Boobs. Boobs. Yeah. You and Elizabeth, man. Yeah. No, I'm with them. I think Elizabeth is hot. I'm not saying it. She's like Alice. But hotter. <laughs> but he just refers to her as boobs. Like, <laughs> well, that's true. You are a bit more offensive with your <laughs> referral. Fine, fine, fine. I'll change it. I'll change it. Tits McGee. <laughs> Tits McGee. Okay. Shut up. Okay. So does this thing still have like plasmas and shit? I have no idea. Kinda. You have Honestly, I have I have not seen oh, anything just... about it except read the review. Oh. Like so, oh. I don't know if I'm just jumping in. That's really good that you haven't seen like the teaser trailers nope. or anything. I haven't I've seen, seen anything either. Maybe I'll buy it. The song in the trailer that was released. Can we buy really it good. and then play it side by side? I don't know. If you guys want to buy me a copy, go nuts. I don't know. Man. Wait, what? I think I might just eBay my steelbook away. <gasps> if you're not going to use it. Yeah. I was thinking of doing that with my Arkham Asylum steelbook. <gasps> just because I'm like, I'm looking right now. I'm like, these things go for like 30 bucks. Wow. Huh. Something I got for free. Have you ordered it? No. You just got it from Future Shop? Yeah. It's Steelbook already? Yeah. You just walk in. They're like side by side. Here's the game, here's the Steelbook. Pick up one of each. And they're free? The Steelbook's free. Uh, yeah. Metacritic of 97. That sounds like a selling point to play then. <laughs> Have you played Bioshock? Yeah, one and two. Did I, you? Didn't, I didn't beat two because my save file got deleted. Wait, you beat one? Yeah. Andrew. Oh, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Ryan. Ryan. Would you kindly? You did talk about that here. I did. Yeah. Did you like it? It was two. It was just that bad, right? Two is pretty middling. Like, oh no, sisters, little sisters. What? No, sisters. I never played two. It was, they had big sisters. I only played one. Okay, did I you didn't like beat one. Oh, did because my the three of them got deleted, and I oh. didn't want to go back to it. Yeah, I really liked it. Did you really? Yeah. What was two about? Now that I played it, like I don't remember. Oh, whoa! It had big sisters and. Fuck if I know. <laughs> Big sisters. I, I played the first five minutes. I'm like, yeah, no. I beat it. I went through that whole thing. I don't remember. Yeah. Yo, let's go buy it. Now, we're, we're, we're about to go on a monster hunt. You want to go buy Bioshock. I just, if I don't spend the day spending my money. <laughs> Saving the, money? Ugh, gross. Metacritic of 97? I... Never look on Metacritic, but that sounds... Uh, that Those sounds... numbers mean nothing to me, but it sounds impressive. Well, the thing I... is, I, okay, after that, I checked out all the sites that I usually check out that I generally find my opinion aligned it's with. like and fives, like, tens. And they're like five, ten out of ten. I'm like, oh, fuck, it really is good. And I'm like, shit. Okay, I'll wait for zero punctuation to put out his. He's going to be like, it's so good, I can't think of anything bad. It's so good, and I'm so British. Yeah. And that's what it's going to hurt. I love I, him. We say this now, and next week, I'm going to come in... Just shitting on this game. Oh, I can't wait. This game's bulls. It's just Bioshock 1 again. Just wait. Kind of I'm going to come in shit. shitting on this game. Wish Little Sisters were back. Boobs. I really like Elizabeth. Elizabeth's really like dumb. I really like boobs, too. I just want to know what's going on with Elizabeth, because in the trailer, she does some fucking weird shit. Yeah, I heard she just... Don't she? she hasn't seen it. No, I heard, like, I heard about the boobs. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah. Well, that's the end of the show, guys. Um, you can always write into us at tniab.letters at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, and subscribe to us on iTunes. We could always use a subscription here or there. Or recommend anywhere. us to your friends. Yes, actually. Your moms and your little sisters. Pick one or more. If you got more than one mom, tell them both. Yeah. You know what the great thing about modern technology is? Built-in iPod connections in modern cars. Just plug it in. Plug and play. Yeah. Play in your car. Play with long, your friends. Your friends will be like, whoa, you know, who are these sexy dudes? Are you going to hockey practice? Plug it in. It's fun. If you're on a date with a girl? Plug okay. it in. She'll love it. Hey. She will. She'll be like, oh, I didn't know these interesting things about Firefly. Hey, Maybe we um, should watch it together. Yeah. Oh, okay, here, here's something for you when you have a date on a girl. Hey, you made a good choice, girl. He's a, he's a nice man. We'll put this as one of those. <laughs> uh, put it at the end. <laughs> hey, boop. You have made a sign- significantly great choice. Yeah. I helped you out, buddy. We got you back here at TNIV. This one's a keeper. <laughs> Did you know? See, we each have a message for them. Did you know? He'll be successful in the future. <laughs> Lock this one down. <laughs> Remember, these messages are unisex. So, girls, you can play it for your guy dates as well. Oh, oh except for mine. Damn. Get in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's my unisex one. <laughs> you know, we need like a girl version for that. It's like, yo, get up on that dick. Like, <laughs> All right, thanks for listening. And, and look forward to next week as we give you the exclusive review of G.I. Joe. Exclusive? <laughs> Pre-screening. My we got body's... invited. To the Hollywood, The Rock was like, "Listen, I love your podcast." And Channing's like, "Come out." Me and Channing, after you know our dance sessions, is like, "You'll believe me, won't come up premiere." Like, yeah, Tate's. Yo, I'm I'm in Step Up Seventeen. Let's do this. And then Vince is hanging out with I don't know the girl who plays Barry Nass. I don't know. <laughs> oh, she she was pretty. I love her. Yeah, see, there you go. So, uh, that's I, I do. I like how Jude we're all hanging Jude out with... Jude Law's uh, girlfriend person. What? Yeah. We're all hanging out with dudes, and then Vince gets a girl. Yeah. Damn. Of course. Damn. That's how the world works. Yeah. But I do get to hang with The Rock. I do get to hang with... Whatever, a stripper. Man. I get to hang with a chick. Dude. A real stripper. He'll rock so- He'll rock bottom someone in the street. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Channing Tatum was actually a stripper. And I'll go meet Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then we'll crash beers together. Yeah, this podcast has gone on long enough. We'll right, see bye. you next week. Later.